Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Liz, and today I wanted to make a video on where to start learning how to code. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Liz and I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics this past May and now I'm pursuing a PhD in Computer Science. One of the things I've learned throughout my academic career is that a lot of people don't think computer science is accessible to them or they think it's too terribly hard and monstrous that they would never attempt it. So I'm trying to break that down in this video so that you know the free resources that you can try right now to go from beginner level all the way to advanced and from that you'll be able to get really high paying jobs in the computer science or software engineering world and even if you don't want to go that path you can still apply these skills to your existing job. So with that let's get into the video. Before you start with one of the tools that I'm going to mention, I think you should consider three things. One, your learning style. So do you do well with reading a lot of text? Do you do better with video lectures? Or maybe you do better with lots of examples. So think about that when I explain each of the tools. Also think about your time commitment. So are you someone who would rather, you know, try to do something 10 minutes a day and learn a skill that way? Or are you more like, I want to do this in three hours on the weekend and just, you know, focus and get it done. And then three, I would consider, you know, if you do have a goal in mind that you want to achieve from a course that you would take. So if you don't have a goal, maybe you're just like, I just kind of want to know what computer science is all about, or I just want to know the basics, something like that, then you can use any of the resources that I'm saying. And if you want more specific goal, then I would say you could look up something that interests you. So maybe you're interested in video game development and you can go Google video game development coding languages so that you know which language you could start with so that that builds your foundation for your interests. Maybe you're interested in web development because your company has a website or where you work for, they have a website that could could use help. Um, so then you can search web development and maybe you'll code in languages like HTML and CSS. And maybe you're just like, I want to do mobile app development. So you would code in Swift or you would use Android Studio if you want to code for Android apps. So I would consider those three things before you get started, but don't let that stop you. We're going to dive right into it with the free resources. The first tools that I want to mention are ones that I've personally utilized and they are super beginner friendly and free, so that's always a plus. These are Codecademy and Free Code Camp. So these two online platforms allow you to practice and learn code within the context of that website. So this means you don't need to download additional software or IDEs to run your program or to learn how to code. A lot of the other things I will mention later on do require you to download certain toolkits and um, different things so that you're successful in running your code. But I'd say no matter what age you are, going to Code Academy is a very good place to start. It usually starts with some reading and definitions to get you into whatever language you want, and then it gives you short examples to where you can see that your code is doing what the examples are saying it does, and you can go from there. The one thing that you might miss from these kinds of sites are longer, more extensive projects, but these you can find in examples that I will later mention. To get to Codecademy or free Codecamp, just search Codecademy and click on the link and you'll find everything you need on the website. The second place that I went to for computer science help was a website called Udemy. And Udemy offers so many different thousands of courses where not only do you get lots of hour long video content, lecture content, interactive content, but also at the end of it, you can actually get certifications. These certifications make you have real credentials that you can put on your resume or you can share on LinkedIn and these will be legitimized and seen as very valuable to your employers versus some of the lower level types of coding camps you might not see as many certifications but with Udemy courses or places like Coursera you'll get a certification at the end of completing the course 
and that will be seen as beneficial to a future employer, especially because the Udemy courses are actually timed, so they most of them have long videos and you can see how much progress you get as you go through them and at the end of it, it'll show you how many hours of work you've put into it. So you can really see and track your progress and make sure that you're getting a lot out of it. Now, one of the great things about Udemy courses is that they have longer examples and longer projects and definitely more detailed kind of coding. So the good thing about the Udemy courses or Coursera courses or any kind of intro to computer science course is that they give you the fundamentals of computer science. So some of the fundamentals that will be covered would be variables, functions, arrays or lists, primitive data types, abstract data types, conditional statements like if else, and then some for loops, object oriented programming, you'll learn about classes and objects, and then also maybe you'll dive into certain algorithms. So if you're someone who has a little bit more time and wants to get a certification out of doing a course, I would definitely recommend Udemy. I know for myself, when I was taking a course in my undergrad, if it was on a language like Java, I would go and take a Udemy course in Java as well because it might have different examples of I don't know how to use a certain function than what I was getting in my actual lecture. So having the two different perspectives gave me a lot more edge in terms of what my classmates were learning and what I was learning so that I could do better on projects and exams. One of the best things about Udemy is that when you get an assignment, so at the end of one of the videos, the lecturer or the author of the content will give you a project like code this to-do list maker, and then you'll go and do it. The plus about the Udemy courses is that the professor will actually go through the solution to the problem. So one, that's great even if you got your code working. So if you got your code working, you get to see how the professor did it because then you're like, oh, well, this is a new way to do it. And then two, if you struggled and you couldn't actually figure out how to do it, you get to learn because the professor actually posts the solution, goes through it with video content. And during my undergraduate courses, when we had projects, if you didn't get your code working, sometimes you never figured out how to do it. And you would just take your loss on that grade and you would be sad. I mean, for me, you would be sad. Maybe some people didn't care, but it's nice that with Udemy and these online courses, they actually post solutions and go through them in depth. You can also comment or post questions and either the author of the content will get back to you or other people taking the course can. So that's really nice to have kind of a community aspect. And then something else that I recently found is the CS50 course. Now, I will link this stuff down below. I'll link everything I talk about down below. But um, the CS50 course, I'm not sure if it started at Harvard or Yale. I will link both of the resources for it in the description box because there is like a specific course outlined on Harvard's website called CS50 and it goes through different lectures that a professor gave. And at the very end, when you get assigned a project, you can actually see other people's projects and what they've been able to do. So I thought that was really cool. Before I found CS50 on Harvard, I actually found it on YouTube. If you guys don't already know this, Yale actually posts full lectures of a lot of courses on YouTube for free. So if you ever think, oh, like, if I can't get into a big college like Yale, I shouldn't go to college. Well, guess what? You can actually watch Yale lectures from YouTube. So if you are wondering what you're missing, just type it up on YouTube and watch it because it's all there. So like I said, CS50 has its own link on Harvard's website, which gives you different a different kind of toolbar to navigate the course, but all of the lectures are also on YouTube. So I just thought I'd mention that. And with this CS50 course, there's actually a Facebook group. So if you type in CS50 on Facebook, it will send you to the CS50 Facebook group so that you can communicate with other people taking the course and possibly learn from them. And even if you don't learn from them, it could be a really good networking opportunity if you're just entering the computer science world and you don't know anyone in computer science. So I would definitely check that out. 
adding on to using YouTube, when it came to my computer science journey, I would mainly use YouTube videos to search for a specific topic or question that I was struggling with in my courses. So I probably wouldn't go to YouTube and just do intro to computer science course. I probably would go um, and say like how to write a simple Python code or a simple th Python program. Um, and then you could also go into like different algorithms like how to do depth first search or the different searching algorithms because it can kind of, I think YouTube's really good in the computer science world when it comes to specific examples. Otherwise you might end up in 40 minute long videos which may answer your question in two minutes of the video but it might be hard to find where um, your topic is, so you might end up wasting some time. So I'd say if you wanna utilize YouTube um, to learn code, then I would say search for something specific that you have in mind. Otherwise, you might wanna go with a Udemy course because if you're doing something like an intro to computer science course, you may wanna have a certification at the end of it, um, whereas in, on YouTube, you may not get that certification. Something else to look out for, there's a lot of free coding activities that are posted like on Google and Girls Who Code. So if you are feeling like you wanna prep for a um, coding interview. So I know I've interviewed for a Google software engineering position and they actually test you with like software, like they, they test you with a coding interview and that could be in a module on your computer or it can be a phone call where they ask you uh, questions and and you code um, so to prepare for that it's good to do coding challenges which could be online for free um, I know there's something called leap code <laughs> uh, that's just so funny to me um, so at my college I didn't know people were doing leap code but it's basically a place where you can go to practice tough coding questions that are good for potential interviewers to ask you and see, I guess, how advanced you are in your computer science career. I personally get stressed out by interviews and to me, I, I didn't put a lot of time into doing like coding questions and stuff like that. But if that's something that does interest you and you want to get good at it, definitely check out Lead Code or just look for coding activities for free. The one thing I don't like about that is that, again, sometimes the solutions aren't posted. So if you're someone like me who does care about the solutions, then I would just look in advance before you start it if there are potential to see the solutions. So that way, if you pour in hours and hours of work and you don't successfully make your code work, you can find out your answer um, if that's important to you. The last two things that I wanted to touch on for advancing your computer science knowledge would be one, to study computer science and get an advanced college degree in it, or two, go to a coding boot camp. So I don't have personal experience with the coding bootcamp. I only have experience with the degree and I'm very fortunate and I'm very thankful that I was able to go to college and achieve my degrees. But I know for people that, you know, maybe they don't, they don't need to do that whole four year journey or maybe they don't, they can't afford it. There are good coding bootcamps that don't cost as much as college that you can go and it's pretty intensive. It could be anywhere from like four weeks to 12 weeks maybe it's a few months, there's so many out there. Um, so I would say search, look up, read up on it. You wanna make sure that before you get started, because these kinds of trainings typically want you to go into industry right away. So if that's what you wanna do it for, because you're just like, I just wanna learn how to do this and then go work as a software engineer. Um, that's great because a lot of them will have um, a high percentage of the people that graduate they are employed um, afterwards, and so that's always good to know. However, if you're someone who is like, I mean, I don't know if I wanna do computer science or not, then maybe investing the time and the time commitment and the potential financial commitment for a coding bootcamp might not be for you if you're not thinking of going right into the industry. I forgot to mention that the courses on Udemy, some of them are free and some of them cost money. There's a lot of sales, so you can definitely check a 
course out but you don't have to completely buy the course and you can wait to see if it goes on sale before you commit I'm pretty sure the most expensive course I've ever bought was like 14 or 15 bucks so it's nothing crazy um, it's just like the cost way less than the cost of a textbook so keep that in mind because even though oh it's 12 bucks it's not free well you can still get a good credential out of it so I'd say it's a worthwhile investment and then of course the ways that I listed afterwards such as getting a degree or doing a uh, intensive coding bootcamp, those cost money as well. But Code Academy and Free Code Camp are free, so you can definitely start there and not have to worry about a financial commitment. The good news that I want to leave you all with is that you don't necessarily need a college degree to have a good successful career in computer science, nor do you necessarily need a coding bootcamp. What you need to do is find a way that you can show your skills to where a potential employer has faith that you have those skills. That has helped me so much because I was able to have different jobs and internships throughout college, which meant that I had those opportunities before I had my degree. And so what they were looking at is the courses that I took. So maybe it was my first year and I only had one or two intro to computer science courses, but I still was able to provide something that the employer wanted to utilize. So I would say don't think that you're limited if you can't have like a degree in computer science. Maybe you just got your degree in finance. Maybe you just got your degree in philosophy and you're just like, well, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but I kind of want to add computer science to my resume. You can still do that and you can potentially have a job in the technological world um, because there's just so many things that computer science applies to. That concludes this video, you guys. I hope you know where to start learning how to code. I hope that my resources can help you, whether you're someone who's never coded before or someone who's pretty advanced in their you know, computer science degree. These are what I've found to be super helpful and gotten me through my four years of hard computer science classes and also through some of my internships. I actually used Udemy courses to help me on the job for my um, software engineering internship. So. These are really good tools that I suggest and let me know if you guys have used them or if you try them out, what you think of them. And if I miss something and you're like, oh, like she's never heard of this. I use this all the time for computer science. Please let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you very soon.